Ah, it's a great time of year, isn't it? I mean, if you take away all the cold and the wind and that stuff, it's a great time. Uh, I would like to thank everybody who has contributed so much to the Christmas celebrations we have had and the ministries that we have had taking place here as part of our congregation. You know, last night we had the choir sing, we had the bells play, we have the praise team, we have uh, all, I don't know what, there were like 20 plus people that were involved in the breakfast downstairs this morning. And although the turnout wasn't that great, you know, I talked to Sophia and I said, look, we are called to be obedient. We can't control results. I can't control how many people show up in worship. You know, at our early service already, we've, I've already preached and there were like two people here, if you don't count Gail and her family and myself. But you know what? We are called to obedience to sh do the work, show up prepared. And, you know, one thing I'll say, when they talk about leadership, they say, if you think you're a leader, look behind you and see how many people are following you. So, you know, I congratulate Sophia and her family. You, you had so many people volunteer on Christmas morning, which, you know, to get here by 8 o'clock, or what, what time do people start arriving? I don't know. 7. You know, to get up and shower and brush your teeth and all that stuff, it, it's an early day. And to make that sacrifice, I just commend all of you for doing that. Um, you know, it takes real commitment. It takes faith, and it takes a heart for service. So, you know, I commend all of you. And as I look around, most of you have been involved in something, uh, even if it was something I didn't mention. Uh, even Ashley over there, she, it's her day to fill the blessing box in the Sunday morning. So she was out there. It's funny because she came in and I, we had talked and she's like, I guess I better check, check the box. So she had to go out and I see the wind hitting her. You know, just praise God for doing what you do all year long. You know, a lot of people will serve when it's a, a holiday and not serve or give any other time of year. But, you know, just I commend all of you for that because it is Christmas and we want to help people and, you know, we want to be a blessing. And we are so blessed because we can say Merry Christmas knowing that the most important word is Christ. Merry Christmas. It's about Christ. So praise God. And I thank you all for that. So uh, when we look at the birth of Christ... Two of the gospel writers recorded something about the birth of Christ, Matthew and Luke. And we're going to look at both of them this morning really quickly. And you, most of you know the story, so I'm not going to dive in and do a deep expository sermon. But in Matthew, uh, Matthew walked with Jesus, knew Jesus, and then recorded the events of Jesus' life in his gospel. Matthew chapter 1, beginning at verse 20, says, Joseph, the son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. So notice Joseph's obedience. And, you know, he obeyed God in a difficult time. In their culture, having, you're not actually married yet, but having your fiancé pregnant would have been a tremendous disgrace and could have been the grounds for death. And Joseph obeyed, not knowing what was going to come of all of this, and he simply obeyed God. And that is what God is looking for from us, obedience, to do what we believe is God's will, give it our best, and leave God, you know, leave God work. And, you know, I've been here 14 years now, and we've seen that. When we let God work, and we do our end of the work, God does work through that. We see that in the past, we see that in the present, and hopefully we will see that going forward into the future. So the other account is in Luke. And I'm just, I'm, I know a lot of you heard this last night, and I've been preaching about this through Advent, but in Luke chapter 2, again, this is uh, the birth story of Christ from Luke, who didn't know Jesus. Instead, he wrote as an investigative reporter, as a historian. And I know I'm repeating a lot of things you have heard, because not everybody comes every Sunday. So if you wonder, why do I keep saying the same things? Well, that's why. Uh, because I think certain details are really so important, I, I will talk about them on a regular basis. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. 
This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified." But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had, concerning what they had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So, we know this story. If you were here last night, we read this last night, and it is just part of the Christmas story. There, there isn't a whole lot written about Christ before he entered his ministry. We see some about his birth, and that, and you know, some of what happened shortly after when he was like age of twelve. We see a little bit about Christ, but most of the Gospels tell what happened about Christ during his time of ministry, leading eventually to the cross. But we gather as a people of God to celebrate what God has done in the past, what God is doing currently, and what God is going to do. So, like, the breakfast downstairs, it's history now. But it is really current. It is today. It's something that we're doing today. So what I'm going to do is invite some people from the congregation up um, and share a little bit about some things that have happened, it could be something that we might be doing in the future. It could be just a blessing, how God is recognizing what we do. Because when we are obedient to God, we see that He honors us and gives us what we need. So, you know, most of all, we gather to worship God on Christmas Day. It is about the worship. And people sometimes will think, well, the singing is our worship. No, what we are doing is worship. Serving God in obedience is worshiping God. So, you know, I would encourage you, not just today, but all year round, think of every day in regards to this umbrella that we are under Christ and that we are serving God. So, uh, Becky, would you come forward? And then, um, just so you know, Becky will go first, Sue will go second, and then I will chat a little bit, Glenn will go third, and then I'll chat some more. And here's a microphone, so... Now, I told them each to limit what they're going to say to about two minutes. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, so I happen to work for Liberty Excavators, which is a construction company. I work in the offices. So for like the, for the, like the last or the two weeks before Christmas, we tend to get goodies from all of our customers. And then we, in turn, will send goodies out to our vendors. So for the first, there's two weeks, we are getting emails all the time. Hey, there's a basket of XYZ downstairs in the kitchen. Hey, there's a big chocolate bar downstairs in the kitchen. Thankfully, I work on the second floor, so I delete the email and I forget about it because otherwise I'd be eating everything in sight. 
this really big, I mean, it's like a 10-pound chocolate bar comes in every year, and like everybody waits for that email. So when that email comes in, it gets deleted right away. So one day, you know, this is not our busy time, so we had some layoffs. So people are working extra hard to pick up the slack, and it was a stressful day. And I thought, I'm going to go get a piece of that chocolate. I get downstairs, and it's all gone, of course. That's a good sign. But my president of the company happened to be down there getting his chocolate for the day. Now, I see Rick every day in the hallways. We say, hi, how are you? How's Jake and John? How's the family? Whatever. But we never have a deep conversation. And we happened to be standing there, and, and he asked me about Christmas, and we got talking about Jesus, and we got talking about family, and yada, yada, yada. And before I knew it, I felt that tap, and I'm telling him about the blessing box. And I don't know why I did this, but I'm telling him about the blessing box and, you know, how we fill it up twice a day, and our community comes and takes and gives whatever they can. And he's like, tell me more about this. So... I proceeded to tell him about the Blessing Box breakfast and how Sophia, one of our youth group kids, had this idea and we did not want to squelch it. We wanted to encourage the compassion that is placed on her heart from God. And we worked on getting this breakfast together and we went on our merry little way. And I thought, okay, I don't know why I did that, but here we go. The next morning I'm working at my desk And he hands me a $500 personal check for the blessing box breakfast and for future food to fill the blessing box. Now, it wasn't a corporate check. It was a personal check from his account. Praise the Lord. And I couldn't say anything. I said, thank you. And he walked out. And we haven't, you know, that was his last day of work. So we haven't even seen each other since then. But what an amazing way for God to use me to tell him about the blessing box. And then God, in turn, used Rick to give us a $500 donation that we were not counting on that we could buy bacon with today and feed people. So, praise the Lord. Amen. Sue, if you want to come up, you can hand that right to Sue. So, when Sophia came to me one Sunday after church and she said, Hey, I have this idea to do a breakfast or something for, you know, homeless people and such. I, you know, pretty much turned her over to Becky. So maybe that's why, you know, just I was a domino in between the two other dominoes that God was using. So praise God for that. Okay, good morning and Merry Christmas. Um, I'm helping to get a project up and running that has been brought to us by Philip. Um, Philip is our Haitian person here. He's waving from the balcony up there. He's helping with the sound today. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Yay! Yes. So Philip has a wonderful idea how he could help his country of Haiti. Um, the school kids there have no way to get to school at present time. Um, if you've seen the news at all, the political situation there is dire. Um, average people cannot get transportation. Um, I just got an email the other day, diesel fuel for trucks is $18 a gallon now, if there is any to be had. So electricity is scarce due to generators not being able to be used. So Philip has a wonderful idea, which I thought, wow, it's, it's a huge idea of how we can help the one school there um, get transportation, and he would like to ship bicycles to Haiti for the school kids. He came up with a number of 150, and we thought, wow, <laughs> that's a whole lot of bicycles. Well, just by talking about this here with uh, church people, Ray Schweitzer helped us out by recommending Recycle Bicycle. Have any of you heard of that in Harrisburg? It is a charity organization. They are all volunteer workers. We went over there and met one Saturday morning, Glenn and I and Philip, and went in and talked to those people. We didn't know if they just donated bicycles to the local community or who they might 
you know, how we could get some bicycles. They took us on a tour of that place. They have bicycles of every size and shape. They have tires, they have chains, they have wires. They have any part that you would need to fix a bicycle. They will give us as many bicycles as we can pack to send to Haiti. So we are trying to organize shipping and all those little details that will be involved in this project. So please keep this project in your prayers. We would love to have it happen. Yeah, that Bicycles for Haiti, pray about it because it will take an act. Can you imagine what it would take you to get one bicycle from here to Haiti and get it to the person in Haiti that you want it to? It will take an act of God, but we're in that business, so it's a good thing. But we need to be a people of prayer, so pray for that because the need is definitely there. Uh, before Glenn talks, um, you know, I, I know a lot of you know about this because I sent out an email about it, but you know, we applied for a $5,000 grant to community aid for food, so we could buy food for the blessing box and for study buddies and some other things primarily. And they came back, at, and we were turned down the last two or three years for community aid grants. So this year, they got, I got the email, and they said, we're going to give you $7,500, 50% more than we asked for. So it's just one of those things, if, if we are paying attention to God and doing what God wants us to do, God will provide what we need. And I was thinking, what a blessing it was last night. You know, we had visitors and guests and people come back. We didn't have to mention money, giving, passing offering plates at all. We have offering boxes out, and you, the people of this church, support us enough that we don't have to really worry and be concerned about how we're going to pay the bills. So uh, th that is a real pleasure in ministry to not have to focus on, man, how we're going to pay the bills and that type of thing. So uh, God is giving us what we need. So praise God. And he is using you to provide for the things that we need. So Glenn has something, it's really new, and probably a lot of you don't know about what he's going to talk about. So, uh, in fact, I'm not really sure what he's going to say. <laughs> to expand a little bit on the bicycle thing she didn't mention, is uh, they suggest highly that if we're going to pack them in a container, that the pedals be taken off and the handlebars be straightened so we can get more bikes in a container. So that means we're going to need lots of help to take off pedals off of 150 bikes in a short time. So keep that on your uh, schedule somewhere, even though we don't know exactly when that's going to happen. But, but uh, just keep that in mind as, uh, as we go along here. Now me. Um, Charlie approached me before with the reorganization of our board and so on and so forth and asked me if I would serve with the uh, Christian Education Commission and be kind of in charge of discipleship. And uh, I guess I kind of hesitated a little bit, but he twisted my arm, so, so I'm doing it. Um, I've checked in some things, and it's going to involve all of you, hopefully. Um, we're looking for people to help us go out in the community, like the Bethesda Mission, to go help in an evening and serve meals. It's only, it's a short time, maybe two hours. Um, and we're also looking at uh, Turning Point Church of God has a uh, Feed My Starving Children. It's a humongous event. It, uh, it's March 16, 17, 18. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They get, uh, they're looking for like 1,400 volunteers to make up food meals to be shipped. Uh, so we'll have that as well. We'll be looking for people to go. I, uh, I'm not sure quite how to handle it yet. You know, I know Thursday or Friday is, is a work day for most people. Um, but we would aim, I guess, for that Saturday. And if we had some retired people that wanted to go up on a Thursday or Friday, we could do that as well. Um, so keep in mind, you'll probably be receiving an email in not too long. Um, we can't make any reservations or get really final notice on times or any of that kind of stuff until, until early March, or February, excuse me. It's six weeks before the event. But, uh, but if we get a list of names that are people that are interested, and then we can go from there, you know, and, and see how many we can get to take up as a crew up there. Um, I've also started uh, myself personally working for New Hope Ministries one day a week, and... Uh, 
there might be some opportunities there for us as well to volunteer. So we're just getting started, we're just getting organized, but hopefully those will be the things that we can do in the, in the future with my discipleship. So thank you. Yeah, so I, I call what he's doing active discipleship. Discipleship is a really big word that nobody can ever actually figure out exactly what it means. And it's kind of like understanding the Trinity. When you think you understand, it changes. You're the last one. Um, yeah, could you just put the mic on there? So, yeah, there are a lot of opportunities. You know, Sandy's, one of Sandy's daughters is the director of the New Redland New Hope Ministries. And if we had committed people, they are only open on Wednesdays at this point because of a lack of volunteers. We could staff it to be open another day. I think it takes four people twice, you know, morning and an afternoon shift to open for one more day. But it would have to be a commitment. Uh, you know, there is a, a group that feeds homeless people in Harrisburg. Missy went and volunteered. April Ocasio uh, leads that, and you can go sign up online. You know, you could take people to that. There, there are a lot of ideas. It's a matter, you know, the Holy Spirit letting Glenn and the church know what we should be doing and going out to. Because a lot of these things, I think a lot of you are willing to do. You're just not sure how to do it, and you don't want to necessarily go and do it alone. Uh, there's, you know, so to help eliminate some of that apprehension. Um, to share the burden, but also to share that glory and that uh, serving together is a good thing. Um, the final thing that I'm going to talk about is I had put a post on Facebook because with the economy and the expense of everything, we started seeing a lot more requests, people coming to the church, people calling the church, needing help, you know, basic help. And they're not, most aren't asking for anything elaborate. It's, you know, food, clothing, uh, somebody had their electricity shut off, um, you know, shelter, you know, we, we don't do a whole lot of motel room stays, but, you know, there are a lot of requests for that. Um, and I put the, this message on Facebook just talking about the need, and a guy sent me a personal message saying, hey, I'd like to donate $500. So he stopped in the, in the church here, and he isn't part of our congregation. I hope to get him here sometime, uh, but he brought a check for $500. Somebody else said, hey, I, I got this coat that was my dad's. Could you get it to somebody? I said, I'll take it. Uh, it's still in my office if you need it. It's a size large. It's an LL Bean, really nice coat. Uh, if you know anybody in need, um, it could be a male or a female jacket. I think it's a men's jacket, but um, we're looking for somebody that could use that coat. So um, it's really, you know, as, as we talk about Christmas, it's about Christ and why he came. Now, we recognize Christ as the anointed one, the Messiah, the Christ, and we gather to, to worship God and we understand, you know, the, the reason for Christmas. And, and even though we do a lot of the secular type things, putting up Christmas trees and giving gifts to each other and having big meals and what, you know, whatever you do for Christmas, uh, that stuff is all good as long as we keep it under the context of Christ is Lord. And that is why we celebrate Christmas. Um, it's a great thing. I love seeing people, you know, Hannah that's all dressed up for Christmas and, you know, the hat here. I don't know, probably some people quit watching online because I'm wearing a Santa hat, but, um, you know, we as the people of God have to always look at, are we pleasing God? Are we being obedient? And this really comes down to an individualistic thing. Are you, or am I pleasing God? But also as a congregational thing, are we as a congregation pleasing God? And we got to keep both of those in focus because we are the people of God. You know, the word saint, singular, you don't find in the Bible what, if it's interpreted properly. But what you do is you find the word saints, plural. We are the people of God. We are the church that Christ established. So, you know, what have we done? We talked about these things. What are we doing? What are we hoping to do? And I hope you're excited by some of the things that we talked about. And if God is nudging you, like, yeah, you know, I'd like to get involved in that. Talk to somebody. You know, talk to somebody about that. Because God provides for what he has ordained. And after Christ was born, as you remember, King Herod was trying to kill Jesus, because Jesus is a king, and Herod felt threatened by this baby king. Are we out of time? Anyway, uh, so God provide. I could read it on the back screen. In Matthew, it says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. They went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. 
When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, which were all value. We know the value of gold, frankincense and myrrh, I don't know. But these were things to help with the mission of God. And we don't know exactly how Jesus' family used this, you know, but we know he had to flee and they went to Egypt and there was a lot, a lot that had to be taken care of. God provides, whether it's for his one and only son, Jesus Christ, or whether it's for us or you as an individual, you know, I just want to encourage you on this Christmas day, go home, celebrate, but most of all, spend some personal time in worship. It's great to worship God together, but make it part of your lifestyle today and every day because Jesus Christ was born, and we love to celebrate that, but he was born because he came here on a mission to reconcile sinners just like you and me to a holy God. And he accomplished his mission. And at the end of his mission, he told us, his church, to go and make disciples. So that's what we are trying to do. You know, we want to love people, show them the love of Christ, and also talk about Christ. So, you know, you heard about some pretty cool things. If you have any cool stories that you ever want to talk about, that's great. Let me know. Maybe we could work it into a message or, you know, if I'm away, you could preach. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you are going to do through your people. And we know someday there will be nothing more for us to do as your son Christ will return and call us all home to be with you for all eternity. Until then, help us to be obedient and do what you would like us to do. In Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's people say, amen. Amen. Thank you.